What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko back with Tony. Hello, hello. And uh, Tony has something uh, really fiery today. Oh yes. I think that's a good way to describe it. Um, it's a deck that actually just recently got support and it's a GX deck, so you know, it's a personal favorite of mine. And I'm excited for Tony to show it off. He's giving me a little bit of the insight, but uh, I'm gonna let him take over from here. Make sure to check out his channel, the link will be in the description. And uh, Tony, go ahead. All right, so the deck we're gonna be doing today is Volcanic. Uh, realistically, the deck has like, you for those who actually keep up with or have been around for as long as I, uh, I have, the deck has existed in many different forms in the past. Just early off, it started to combine with Monarchs as this kind of going second or going first removal tempo deck. And then around the Zexoir became this kind of reload uh, control deck. And now with the new support from Soul Burning Duelist, you actually have a little more of a pure Volcanic deck. Because one of the bigger issues with Volcanic is that a lot of Volcanic cards didn't do much until now. Uh, what we have now, however, is something still viable i i but I'll, I'll as i get into it, i'll explain it i'll start by first going through some of the actual volcanic cards okay so starting off we have just of course the original three rocket on summit searches for any blaze accelerator for those who don't know what blaze accelerators uh if blaze accelerators are they are the sub art type of cards that mesh well with the volcanics the idea behind them is that your blaze accelerator cards let you dump your volcanic cards which will trigger all your volcanic cards effects while also generating field advantage and this is the card that will search it unfortunately one of the bigger issues with this is that because it searches a blaze accelerator card and not an actual volcanic card this isn't do anything for your volcanic strategy in the way you think you want it. but this is covered up by the new card that comes out in volcanic trooper on some volcanic trooper searches for any volcanic card which perfectly very much uh combos well or mixes well with this that lets you search for pretty much anything you want and also there's an additional effect where you can discard a card from your hand to summon a bomb token to your opponent's side of the field this bomb token when killed will inflict 500 damage to your opponent uh as i get to the basic seller cards i'll explain why this, this effect even exists but know the idea is to put a monster on your opponent's side of the field moving on to what we call the ammo of the deck we have three volcanic rimfire starting volcanic rimfire is one of the newer ones of the deck uh, volcanic Rimfire, when sent to the graveyard, has one of two effects. Either A, lets you send any volcanic card from your deck to the graveyard, so it acts as a way for, if it's pitched, let's say, by something like for your uh, trooper, to send a different volcanic card that you need in the graveyard, or by banishing a Blaze Accelerator card from your field, or Blaze Accelerator specifically, from your field or your graveyard. Actually, I think it's Blaze Accelerator card. Yes, it's Blaze Accelerator card. Had to, <laughs> right, had to, had to, for, for the third time. <laughs> uh, by managing a Blaze Accelerator card from your face-up field or your graveyard, you can directly place a Blaze Accelerator card from your deck face-up on your field. This has obviously the benefit of let you swap out a Blaze Accelerator card for a different one, but it also functionally lets you play Trap Blaze Accelerator cards that you would otherwise have to set on your turn one, which has some really cool benefits to speed up your deck. Okay. Uh, the other kind of ammo cards we have is, of course, a three Volcanic Shell. A uh, Volcanic Shell on the graveyard lets you pay 500 to add another one. This is just continuous advantage that as long as you keep pitching them, will let you keep getting another one. And this is a great way to cycle through your deck in a number of ways. Okay. These ones, however, are the level one ones. And uh, this will be relevant for another card. But one of the level two ones we're playing is a Volcanic Scattershot. This card is, it's, it's, it's powerful. Uh, one cent of the graveyard inflicts 500 damage to your opponent. That's kind of cool. Uh, what's more powerful, however, is when sent to the graveyard by a Blaze Accelerator card specifically, you can send two more scatter shots from your deck to the grave, or tech your hand to the grave, so you can't actually necessarily brick with it, blow up your opponent's entire field. Oh. Because both these decks trigger when sent to the graveyard, just one a little more conditionally, you can chain block with this effect. As in, you could send the Blaze uh, Scatter Shot off of a Blaze Accelerator card, trigger the effect to blow up chain link one, trigger the effect to burn chain link two, and your opponent can functionally not negate the effect to blow up your opponent's field. You this can, is a surefire kill. This is kind of crazy that it chain blocks itself. Yes. Granted, it has to be sent by a Blaze Accelerator card, but there's a lot of ways to do it. What it realistically means, though, is that if you, you really can't send it with Rimfire to get the effect off. That's okay. kind of the only limitation that comes with this card. But you have ways to sending it on your opponent's turn, but you'll most likely want to be sending it on your turn to really deal a lot of damage. Because combined with the 1500 damage and then your monsters, you are actually can very easily kill your opponent with burn damage into battle damage. So I'm sure you're going to get into this later, but this build is a going second. This is a going second. The, the idea behind this is that while a lot of these cards can do a lot, they probably can do 
a lot more if you're putting your opponent either you're clearing your opponent's field with those cards or putting your opponent in a position where they're really low on life or everything else will burn, any burn can kill. Okay. Anyway, going into one of the other cards we have then, it's the one Volcanic Dude Fire. I'm still playing this card personally because I, I actually do generally like this card, especially with the new support. Yep. You have ways of actually setting up its summoning condition. So Doom Fire can be summoned by sending any Tri-Blaze Accelerator from your deck to the grave. That is a specific card and that should make this card hard to summon, but we have ways of getting a Tri-Blaze Accelerator pretty quickly onto the field thanks to our Rimfire, which allows us to place any Blaze Accelerator onto our field. Uh, more importantly though, on your opponent's turn, everything must battle this card, or attack in general. But if this thing destroys a monster by battle, either on, in any way, you blow up your opponent's entire field and flick 500 for each card. This is a way of clearing your opponent's field without using the scatter shot that essentially can also just straight up leave one OTK. It's 3k attack, which is already massive as it is. It runs over anything small, everything else goes. And then combined with whatever else, you're just burning and then killing. That is pretty cool. Yeah. And it's, given how easy to summon is, a card that comes out of nowhere. Uh, the other boss monster is Volcanic Ember. Ember can be summoned from your hand or graveyard by banishing either a Blaze Accelerator specifically or a three Pyro monsters from your graveyard. Upon doing so, when special summoned, it inflicts 500 damage to your opponent for every banished Pyro in you have. So in a situation where you're actually banishing three Pyro for it, that's 1500 damage. Now, conveniently, that is three Scatter Shots, which means essentially, if you launch Scatter Shot beforehand, it doubles the damage of Scatter Shot's effect. You dealt 1500 Scatter Shot, you dealt 1500 this, and then combined with the 3100 attack, that is 6,000 damage. And that means you only need 6,000 damage more or 2,000 damage more to end the game. Yep. Which is actually shockingly relevant because it has another effect where on the field, if you want to special on the monster, it inflicts 500 damage to your opponent. So, so it locks them into very minimal summoning. Yes, under the situation where you have dealt 3,000 with this and then hit directly for that, your opponent's under is at 1,900. They get three special summons before the next special summon kills them. Yep. And that pressure is already enough in the idea that you could just, you don't actually have to kill your opponent. You could just put your opponent in such a dire situation that they will die nonetheless. Okay. And that's why, the only reason why we are also playing one of this is realistically because it can summon itself from the grave. You'll find a number of ways to dump it with things like Rimfire and other effects, and then just bring it back from the grave rather than having to add it. Doomfire, on the other hand, is just a card that sometimes you don't want to have too many because you don't want to brick with, but it's a card that you can search in with your trooper, which will then can snowball into a, uh, can go into a kill if you need to. Okay. And that's why we're playing only one of each. Anyway, going into the, I guess, other volcanic S cards, or in this case, the Blaze Accelerator cards. We're going into the spells a little bit, starting off with three Volcanic Blaze Accelerator. This is the new Blaze Accelerator. Uh, very specifically important here is that it's a Volcanic card as well. Why is that relevant? It means that because it's a Volcanic card and a Blaze Accelerator card, all your searches can go into it. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, to activate this card, you have to send a Blaze Accelerator from your fit deck or face up on your field to the graveyard. Uh, that is, unfortunately, it means that we have to play the original Blaze Accelerator, but it's not that big, uh, big of a problem. Uh, on the field, it could, on one turn, let you special summon a volcanic card from your hand to the field. Uh, this lets you special summon things out like uh, multiple, your troopers and your accelerators, if you've opened multiple. And in a lot of situations, you can actually go from one to the other using this card. More importantly though, it lets you target one monster your opponent controls, and then send a level 1 volcanic from your deck to the grave, and then kill it. So that'll send your shell or your rimfire. Rim fire, and yeah. then both of these will then set you advantage. But it's also, again, the idea is that it's, it's another way to remove a monster on the field. Your, your opponent has to respect that when you're activating a card that realistically doesn't do a lot initially, but it can set you up greatly while still killing your opponent's field. And yep. that idea of being able to get that set up means that, as I'm going to reveal, you want to go second. As much as there are ways for cards like, for example, the trooper, which I summons that bomb token to give you a monster to kill, You'd rather just do this by killing real monsters. Yeah. And this is just a way to do it. Uh, unfortunately, because of the condition that can only be activated by uh, sending a Blaze Accelerator, it does limit you... The open, playing multiple copies can be slightly risky because it also means that if you run out of Blaze Accelerators, you run out of ways to actually activate this card from hand, but due to Rimfire, you have ways of directly activating this card directly from your deck anyway. Yep. And the next, we have three Blaze ex uh, Fire Ejection. Fire Ejection lets you send a Power Monster from your deck to the grave. So it's a foolish bear. If you send a volcanic monster specifically, though, it lets you do one of two things. Either A, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that uh, sent monster's level, or B, summon a bomb token to your opponent's side of the field. This is a way, realistically, of if you go f uh, going first, this is a way for you to put up a bomb token so that you can get effects like your uh, blaze accelerators off. Or going second, it lets you just inflict an uh, amount of damage to your opponent. I have used this before just to send a volcanic emperor to the grave, inflict the non damage, and summon the volcanic emperor and then deal more damage. This is a burn card and a setup card all in one. Uh, unfortunately, one of the weird things I want to point out about the deck, and it's kind of weird, uh, funny, 
despite having so many cards that you dump things, you actually run out of things that dump very quickly. Okay. So you're really trying to make the games as short as possible. Yes. As a, uh, because of the idea that like things, for example, like your scatter shot is once you dump all three scatter shot by its own effect because it won't send all three. You're finding you have to find the find ways to put them back in your deck, or you you functionally run out of that as an avenue. Yep. So then you're burning things like your scat shells and your rimfires, but your rimfires is only as good as what the rimfire can actually do yep. or dump, and your shells are only as good as adding another shell. Once you run out of shells and once you run out of rimfires, you're just randomly dumping things for the sake of dumping things. Okay. And you do not have that kind of uh, longevity that you need. Okay. We're playing the one uh, blaze accelerator. It's this funny enough also lets you send any volcanic from your hand to the grave to blow up a card but it locks you out of your battle phase which is not quite great for going second however sometimes it is just a way to clear a monster if you need to okay. and if your opponent doesn't negate it who cares you could banish it from the grave to summon our emperor if you have to okay. uh, we're also playing one wildfire though uh wildfire is a quick play spell that says blow up all of blaze accelerators you control and then blow up all monsters on the field then summon a wildfire token that's a thousand attack thousand defense but you can attack this turn so it's not exactly as great going second, but it is a decent card if you have to go first because it is kind of a, a field nuke that lets you send things to the grave while someone's still putting up something for next turn. It's also a disruption, I guess, if you go second, you don't OTK, you yeah, can set you it. set this card and then it's wait for your opponent to spring. Yeah. Uh, it's relevant conveniently because one of your blaze cellars actually has a graveyard effect, which lets you be, which can be launched with this. Okay. But in most cases, this is just another field nuke and you really don't mind if you blow up your own things because at the end of the day, the one you want is just emperor to end the game and because of the fact that this blows up your field you put the emperor back in the grave to banish three more things to just inflict more damage on its on summon effects yep this game deck has like that theory of inevitability uh we have two for uh uh i guess foolish bear of goods this is to dump uh specifically i guess the next well, blaze accelerator blaze accelerator reload so reload here can is a continuous trap that says on either player's turn you can send a volcanic monster from your hand to the grave draw a card this is a great way for you to start swapping things like your shells, which can function to replace themselves, or funny enough on your opponent's turn, it's launching a, discarding a scatter shot to trigger the effect to just get another free card. More importantly though, once in the graveyard, you can banish it to dump any volcanic card. Because this still sends a volcanic card, this also can, funny enough, trigger your uh, shell. The reason why you're playing Foolish Bale Goods is to get this in the grave to get that Foolish Bale effect, which can send any number of viable options, one of them specifically being the Emperor that goes off so essentially this becomes a regeki if you uh or a summon a 3k monster or because they can banish on your turn as well you could also just send scatter shot and be a regeki on your turn this is another way you get this on the field and like i said before with a card like uh, wildfire you can actually launch this at any point off of wildfire and then get the scatter shot effect directly from deck if you need to okay from there then we have our going second cards we have of course the three uh forbidden chalice this is um the idea is like it's in this case a better imperm imperm requires you to control no cards which is something that is a little difficult once you control a blaze accelerator so you kind of have to do open this but the fact is you're negating your opponent's monster and this is how it doesn't matter how much attack they have because you're blowing it up you're gonna, you're gonna blow it up yeah yep. uh three uh for uh forbidden droplets same idea you, a lot of your cards here as i mentioned kind of replace themselves you can launch any number of these spells once you burn them you can launch any number of your shells or rimfires because they will trigger funny enough rimfire does trigger hell you can even launch your emperors and these ones and your troopers because they don't have exceedingly high amounts of attack so the damage they do is minimal but it, as long as it turns off your opponent's field, that's beneficial for you. Yep. Uh, and funny enough, once again, it can launch this directly from your hand or field, and that turns on the graveyard effect live. Yep. So that's relevant there. Uh, lastly, then, oh, look, I have forgotten some monsters that are relevant. I actually have forgotten some monsters. Okay. Um, we have three Hita. So Hita here can discard itself from the hand alongside any other fire monster to add a fire monster from your deck to hand with attack higher than the other monster you discarded. As it completely turns out, discarding any of your ammo pieces which have low attack lets you get anything else in your deck. Yep. So when you discard something like a rimfire or a shell, you can add a trooper, a, a trooper, a rocket, any of the big ones, and because these ones replace themselves, it's essentially a free search for any fire volcanic monster. monster you want. You, yep. You're locked into uh, effects of fire monsters, but but you are anyways. You're already playing fire monsters anyway. Who yeah. cares? And of course, the newly unlimited or newly limited blaster. This is just another way to put more damage on the field. And funny enough, because it banishes the fire monsters in your graveyard, surprise, it feeds into your Emperor's burn effects. So it's just damage that becomes more damage. Okay. And then lastly, the last card here is the Volcanic uh, Inferno. 
Inferno here is a continuous trap that when active uh, while on the field, if your opponent activates a monster effect, you can banish one of your power monsters in your graveyard, negate the activation, inflict 500. So combined with something like Emperor, this is just a way to just really put pressure on your opponent. Once again, it's not really relevant in the idea of going first with it, because as you can see, going first, sometimes this is not enough. But when you've put your opponent down to like a thousand life points and they're like a special summon and a burn away from losing to everything, this 500 damage burn into a negation can be super relevant. Yep. Also, on your opponent's end phase, you can target two of your power monsters that are banished or in your graveyard, shuffle them back in the deck. This is a way for you to recycle pieces that you already have, specifically in this case, your shells. You can shuffle back two shells and then have one shell remain and add it back, or through the course of two turns, which is why it is not the greatest, you can shuffle back two scatters, uh, all three scatter shots to have its effect live. It's just another way, it's a negation that it focuses into recycle. Okay, so that's it for the main deck. It's a 40 card main deck? 40 card main deck. Okay. And our deck. We have one card, because I the extra deck did not matter enough. Uh, you're barely ever making an extra deck, but the one you're probably making mostly is just going to be this Heater. That's uh, it. Heater, when it dies, obviously search for a Fire Monster. It also lets you bring back a Fire Monster. The idea behind why you're even playing the Heater in the first place is to link away the Emperor. Sometimes you the Emperor has stuck around for too long, and you want to burn again. You can link it away, and then bring it back, and then that's the burn. So, do you, just one card extra. It's just kind of one card extra. Right, you, could, three you, you could fill your entire extra deck with actual pieces of things, like just generic pieces, like, for example, an Axis Code combo, whatever. But again, sometimes you're locked into Pyro effects and, or Fire effects, and that's not optimal. But at the end of the day, you're killing through the main deck. Quick question. Does uh, the Volcanic cards lock you into Pyros for the whole turn or after the card is used? So, humorously enough, I don't think any of them lock you actually into Pyros much either okay. which is why i'm saying you can play a lot of generic options it's just that a lot of times because of the way the deck works you don't put up a lot of monsters anyway a lot of times your board begins with normal summoning a rocket and then that may be leading you to summon something like the emperor okay which gets you two monsters but nothing superb enough to make some kind of combo out of it i was just thinking as well a really good card in the side deck uh, might be super poly maybe they could put super oh, poly yeah, targets you can play super poly targets as well as, like, again this the, the extra deck is whatever you need to cater to your specific situation okay uh there are seen lists that play things for example like extravagance uh i would not recommend playing prosperity because it house your damage as well yeah so if you're going to try to burn or kill your opponent that kind of screws you over it's the same reason why i haven't i'm not playing something like dark no more because i can't on a four to not deal damage and make this deck actually become a threat and as a result you're forced to kind of like work around the non-damaging limitations of those generic cards okay and then Hida is also technically a consistency yeah. card you can also play do little chimera just to pump up your dudes yeah. and actually leads an otk <laughs> yeah. in its own way but at the end of the day, the, deck, the deck's goal is very simple. You either, if you're going first, you have a play because you have ways of setting up things like your accelerators to just get you advantage. But going second, you're going to be using any of the numbers going second cards. Turn off your opponent's field. Launch a scatter shot uh, to deal the 15 nuclear opponent's field. Then you could bring back, banishing those three scatter shots, the Emperor for another uh, 15. You hit for the 31, combined with any other monster. Let's say, for example, like a rocket. That is exactly game. That Even without the rocket, game. you're locking them into like three summons. You're you're locking them into three summons combined with the fact that then you combine this with things like for example the inferno which your trooper can search and then your trooper essentially while well, the, well, the trooper can rid of the rocket cannot kill your opponent these two will then kill your opponent or you know you end up finding ways to access things like your uh, doom fire or your blaster which automatically end the game and yeah. then that that way it's very easy to put up the ak going second and then it's going first because all your cards clear your opponent's monsters yep. at this point the only go and goal is to make sure that they have very little to try to do it again yep. build their board again perfect okay thank you tony for the deck profile i actually think this is really cool and i think i agree with you going second is the way to go with this deck you have tons of space to play the breakers and then well, like I, I tried building this deck first I, I thought there would be much better opportunities to go for this deck to go first but a lot of times your only interaction will be just the Inferno and maybe the chance to scatter shot your opponent. And may that may be enough. You could just play a bunch of hand traps and that and might be that you and hope for that. But this deck, weirdly enough, has a propensity to sometimes do a whole lot of nothing. Yep. Just because you don't see a lot of the pieces that or see the pieces that you need to go first with it. Yep. If I open a rocket, I can search for the uh the volcanic blaze accelerator that gets me a spin of special summon but guess what i don't have a way of putting a bomb token on my opponent to be able to trigger any of the further effect yeah it's dumb so i'm forced to grab a trap card which i can't use that turn and it just doesn't do enough 
Yeah. And as a result, it's just much better to instead to let, let your opponent build your board and for you to play a number of cards that let you then clear that board. And then with whatever they have left, these cards then become enough. Yep. And that's the mentality there. Perfect. Okay, thank you, Tony, for the deck profile. Uh, we appreciate it, as always. Make sure to check out Tony's channel if you guys haven't already. He already promised to upload. I don't know where, where, where are we in that process. Uh, we're, 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 we're still filming. We're still filming. All right, we're getting there. He yeah. will uh, he'll be on his channel. Um, I feel like he's holding something spicy to show off eventually. Uh, that, that's for me, that's for me. All right, all right. So make sure to check out his channel. Link will be at the top of the description. Thank you guys all for watching. Uh, Tony, you want to say anything else no, before we that, that is it. I hope you all have a good day, and I will see you guys next time. Peace!